She know damn well she cannot see inside here. Now you know damn well you can't see inside here. I didn't see if you just see better. I haven't put the car in drive yet. Huh? I haven't raised the car up. I ain't even plug oh, in the I'm controller. Just making sure you don't put your seatbelt on. I always wear my seatbelt in this one. With that being said, what is good, y'all? You dig what I'm saying? And welcome back to yet again another episode of J.I. Productions. It's your boy, J.I., and I'm back at it again with another banger. You dig what I'm saying? So yesterday, I did a poll on my Instagram. If you're not already following me on Instagram, what's wrong with you, man? It's on the screen right now. Go check it out. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, it's also in the link in the description down below. So go check it out. Um, but anyway, I put a poll on my Instagram last night asking if you guys, well, if the people who follow me on my Instagram um, wanted me to do a um, video talking about what you need to know when you're looking for a used Camaro. See, I'm not saying I'm an expert. I'm not saying none of that. You know what I'm saying? But what I am saying is I have bought two used Camaros, fifth gens. Um, and the first one, that's a different story. I knew something was wrong with the first one, so we're not really upset with the first one. The first one was the stepping stone into this shit. Now this one right here, as you guys can see, it's in pristine condition. Interior, exterior, uh, has like minor flaws, you know what I'm saying? Like the front bumper needs to be repainted and stuff like that. Stuff that I already talked about, um, but anyway. What is good, y'all? You dig what I'm saying? So I'm on the road now. Um, I actually shot this video, this is take two. I actually shot this video earlier and that's where I got the intro from. Um, I like the intro, but the video, I felt like I was rambling and I don't like watching videos where people ramble. So I try my best not to ramble in my videos um, because I know it's boring. But today, you see the title, you see the thumbnail. Like I said, I did do a poll on my Instagram and everybody said yes. These are gonna be the top I'm gonna do three. Let's just do three to start off. And then, you know what I mean? If you have any tips and tricks as far as, you know, what to look for as well, go ahead and drop them down in the comment section down below. You guys know I read all my comments. And J.I. Squad, you know what I'm saying? We all gotta come together to help out. So basically, number one, the first thing you're gonna wanna know is obvious. Do you want a V8 or do you want a V6? Now, in my personal opinion, it doesn't matter to me. Um, coming like just straight into the game um, from like a daily driver, like a, you know, your first car. My first car was a 1998 Toyota Avalon. So it didn't matter to me if it was a V8 or a V6. Now, some people do care and I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, there are those die hard car enthusiasts, right? Who believe every car is supposed to be a V8. If you have a sports car, an American muscle car, it has to be a V8. And that's what they believe. They're gonna get on you, bro. There's gonna be, if you make your car build public, there are gonna be negative comments in the comment section, people talking their shit, running it up behind their computer, um, and all the extras, you feel me? But honestly, that is one thing that you do need to know before you go into this. There's gonna be pros and cons with both sides if you get a v8 i'm gonna be honest if you have a heavy foot like i do you'll be at the gas station every other day if you know what i'm saying if you get a v8 the parts are definitely more expensive as far as performance goes versus a v6 because it's you know what i'm saying it's a v8 there's now there's now four cylinders on both sides versus the six so like for example with long tube headers there's four tubes instead of three you know what i'm saying on each side so it's extra metal but um that's that's just number one you gotta know what you're getting into what motor you're gonna get into um you gotta know the pros and the cons of both parties and you know what i mean potentially just what you want to drive you feel me Drive dog, this dude brake check. He brake checked me twice. 
just to get over. And Dan didn't put his blinker on. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, so yeah, that's number one. You know what I'm saying? What motor do you want? Do you want a LS3 or do you want a V6? It's up to you. Now, second thing is gonna be what transmission do you want? Do you want a manual or do you want an auto? Again, there's pros and cons to both. When you get an automatic, there's nothing that's gonna, there's no manual that is gonna shift as fast as an automatic, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Because it's an automatic, it's a machine. However, however, if you do get a manual, you know, there's like that driver mod, there's that driver feel, you get to feel like you're one with your car, you know what I mean? Your shifts are literally you doing it, you're doing all the work and stuff like that, which is cool and all, but who really, you know what I mean? Then number, number, uh, the third con for a manual is when you're stuck in traffic, you feel me? You're literally going from first to second. So you weren't even, bro, come on, man. Anyway, I'm sorry, man, I'm trying to pay attention. Anyway, it's like, do you want a manual or do you want an auto? Now, the third, the third thing that I wanted to touch up on is basically checking the motor. How many miles do you have? Like, is it too deep in the miles? Is it just getting started? When I bought my car, it had 70, this one. When I bought this one, it had 72,000 miles, I believe. And when I bought the V6, it had, uh, I want to say like 76 or 75, something like that that's still relatively not new right but it's already like past the break-in point it's you know it's matured now everything is settled in you can still have if you keep the maintenance right you can still have a very healthy car a very long lasting car if you keep the maintenance right see like my car right now has about almost 79,000 it's 78,526 miles on my car right now um the transmission as you guys know is brand new um however it's doing this right here which is so weird to me it's literally jumping back from neutral to drive but stays in drive i don't know why and then when i go to put it in reverse i have to basically put the car like past reverse and like as if i was putting it in park and then it clicks into reverse if that makes any sense i don't know but like that's what it's doing. It's been doing that for the past couple of days now. And um, I'm gonna take it to CarMax and have them look into it. But I just, I don't wanna be without my humble man. I'm trying to make content for you guys, you know what I'm saying? But, back to, back to the tips, right? So, what have we already discussed? Number one, what motor do you want? Number two, what transmission do you want? Those are all things that come off of personal preference as far as the tranny goes, I would definitely take into consideration where you live. If it's hella busy where you live, you know what I mean? If there's always traffic, you should be mindful of that. Because, you know what I mean? You don't want to be sitting in traffic all day going from first to second. From first to second in your daily driver. And you got a stage three twin disc clutch from Mantic. You know what I'm saying? Your legs gonna hurt, man. <laughs> your calf muscle is gonna feel the burn. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be leg day every day. Who the hell wants that? Not me, goddamn. You know what I'm saying? Got me a little automatic. Put that joint in drive, you feel me? Well, this shit don't make no sense. But put that joint in drive and take off. And then with the 15s um, SS's, um, this is all one thing that I did notice from jumping from my old car to this car definitely like you can use the paddle shifters whenever you want if the car's in drive you can use them if it's you know what i'm saying in manual obviously you can use them but it's crazy because with my v6 hazel oh yeah i gotta air up for this one hazel i couldn't do that like you know what i'm saying so that shit blew my that stuff blew my mind i can't you know what i mean like what that really it really made me feel like i have like don't you know y'all gonna roast me in the comments but it really made me feel like i had an exotic off rip because like 
just being able to use the paddle shifters on command and then after you stop shifting or if you leave it in a gear for too long you know what i mean and the car feels like you just want to go back to regular driving it just switches back to drive for you and it's like what the hell but yeah man i totally 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 recommend getting a camaro to anybody who's in the market for one you know what i mean and this can go both ways for these tips can go both ways for ford or for ship or any car honestly dodge too what transmission do you want what engine do you want and how many miles does the car have you know those are all things that you guys should be checking the carfax obviously those are like the no-brainers the carfax for sure making sure that the car is has been well maintained or hasn't been in any accident is something that's really really important because when i got hazel hazel had frame damage and i knew she did um but again it was like a really 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 small window of time that i had before i moved to california so when that car was brought to me i just said go ahead and pull the trigger because i didn't know if i would be able to find another one um but if i'm being honest if the car has like minor frame damage even if it's minor it's still gonna show like hazel's frame damage wasn't that bad however whenever i went to change the bumpers and stuff like that and put it on new bumpers the correct way it actually actually pulled the um the driver's side fender and made it crack i don't know if you guys noticed that crack that i had on my driver's side fender but that was from me putting the bumper on the right way the car was kind of shifted internally so the bumper didn't want to fit that's why the fender cracked but um you know what I mean? It's all up to you guys. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to make this video to let you guys know some of the things that I look for whenever I um go to buy a new car. Um, I just thought there's not enough videos on Camaros about this topic. There's some for stangs. There's some for chargers. Like, you know what I mean? There's some for the other cars, but nobody's making these videos for the Camaro. So, you know, J.I., gotta come up and stand out for the marrows you know you already know how that go but um yeah man to be honest just remember you're buying a car for you not for the crowd if you do buy v6 trust me there's gonna be a lot of hate but if it makes you happy then that's all that matters you're building your car for you not for nobody else at the end of the day you're the one that drives it you're the one that pays for it and you're the one that spends time in it you're the one that spends your hard-earned money on it so why the hell would you try to take the time out of your day to make your car make someone else happy you know what i'm saying it just doesn't make sense but without further ado that's gonna be it for this video i'm gonna see you guys in the next one make sure you smash that subscribe button give this video a big thumbs up and drop your tips down in the comment section down below make sure to follow me on instagram and snapchat without further ado like i said man that's gonna be it for this one i'm gonna see you guys in the next one peace <laughs>